This is part 61 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to call an ASP.NET web service using jQuery Ajax. Here's what we want to achieve. We're going to have this database table TBL employee. We want to retrieve data from this database table using an ASP.NET web service. We want to call that ASP.NET web service using jQuery Ajax, retrieve the data and display that on a web page as you can see here. So on the web page, we are going to have an interface to enter employee ID. For example, if we enter employee ID 3 and then when we click this button get employee, we want to retrieve employee ID 3 details and display them in a table as you can see here. So let's see how to achieve this. The first step here is to create this database table which I have already done and here is the SQL script to create the table and here we have insert script to insert some test data. I've already executed the script so we have this employee table with ID name, gender and salary columns. I have also created a stored procedure which is going to retrieve employee by ID. So if you look at the stored procedure, it has got ID parameter. And the implementation of the procedure is straightforward. All we have here is a select statement which retrieves ID name, gender and salary columns from TPL employee where ID equals whatever value we are passing for this ID parameter. So for example, if we pass 2 as the value for ID parameter and if we execute the stored procedure, we should get employee ID 2 details. So these are the two things that we need to do from the database side. Create the table, populate it with test data and then create a stored procedure to retrieve employee by ID. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an ASP.NET web application project. Within the web.config file, I have included a connection string to our sample DB database. So this sample DB database contains our table TBL employee. And at the moment, we're using Windows authentication. The next step is to add a class file to this project. And let's actually name this class file employee.cs and this class is going to contain four properties which correspond to these four columns in the database table. So the first property here is going to be of type integer and the name of the property is id and we are going to have another integer property which is salary and we're going to have two string properties. The first string property is going to be name and the second one is going to be gender. So these four properties correspond to the four columns in the database table. All right, so the next step is to create the web service itself. So let's go ahead and add a new item. And if you scroll down, we should find web service. And let's call this web service employee service. Now, we want this web service to be called from JavaScript. If that's the case, you have to uncomment this attribute system.web.script.services.scriptService. Look at the comment right here. To allow this web service to be called from script using ASP.NET Ajax, then uncomment the following line. Now here we are actually using jQuery Ajax, which is still a script. So if you want this web service to be called from JavaScript, then you will have to decorate your web service with the script service attribute. And I'm going to change the name of this method to get employee by ID. So to this function, we are going to provide employee ID which is of type integer. And what is this function going to do? It's going to return an employee object back. So this method, you know, we're going to include some ADO.NET code, which is going to retrieve the employee details and return the employee object back. Okay, so in the interest of time, I have already typed the required ADO.NET code. So let's go ahead and copy that ADO.NET code from the notepad, and then we'll quickly go over it. So this is straightforward ADO.NET code. At the moment, notice that we've got several compilation errors. That's basically because we are missing some namespaces here. So this configuration manager class is present in system.configuration namespace. SQL connection class is present in system.data.sql client namespace. 
and this command type enum is present in system dot data namespace so we have included all those namespaces here and at the moment we don't have any compilation errors right so if you look at this code it's straightforward adio.net code the first thing that we are doing here is creating an instance of the employee class which we have created and then we are reading the connection string from web.config file and then we are creating a SQL connection object using this connection string and then we are creating a SQL command object and this command object is going to execute the stored procedure sp get employee by id that is the stored procedure and if you notice the stored procedure has got a parameter which means we have to supply a value for that uh, parameter so the next step here uh, since it is a stored procedure we are telling that to the command object using the command type uh, property and then we are creating the SQL parameter object the value for this parameter is coming from this parameter which is coming into this method and then we are associating the parameter object with the command object opening the connection executing the command and once we have the data we are looping through and you know retrieving name gender salary and ID column values populating the respective properties of the employee object so where is this employee object it's created on the top here and then once we have populated all the properties of the employee object we are returning that employee object back so this is straightforward adio.net code nothing to do with jquery ajax the only bit that is related to script that is ajax is this attribute so if you want your web service to be called from script then make sure you decorate your web service with the script service attribute so now let's go ahead and quickly test our web service so this web service you know is going to expose that function get employee by id we provide it an id it's going to return an employee object back and the format of that employee object will be in xml because this is a web service so we have this web method available click on that and if we provide for example let's say employee id 3 click invoke notice that we get employee id 3 details in xml format now let's see how to call this web service using jquery ajax and then we want to display this data on a web form like this so the first step here is to design the page like this I already have added this um, HTML page 1.html to a project and I also have the ready function wired up within the body section we don't have any HTML so we need to implement the HTML so the web form looks like this in the interest of time I have already typed the required HTML so let's go ahead and copy this HTML and paste it within the body section and if you look at this HTML again it's straightforward we have the literal text ID which you see here and then we need a text box and a button so to get the text box we are using an input element and then here we have you know an, an input element of type button okay and the value on that is get employee and then we need this table so I have a table here where we have set border to one border collapse and then we have basically three TRs and each TR has got two TDs every TD has got a text box to display you know name gender and salary alright so straightforward HTML okay so now if we view this HTML page in the browser this how it looks like so we want to enter employee ID and when we click get employee we want to call the web service retrieve the employee details and display them in the respective text boxes so let's see how to do that we have the ready function already wired up here so you know all this should happen when we click this get employee button and we have an ID for that button which is btn get employee so let's go ahead and associate click even handler so find the button by ID and when we click the button we want to call a function and execute some code okay so when we click the button what is the first thing that we need to do we need to first retrieve the ID value that the user has entered in this text box and this text box also has got an ID and the ID of that text box is txt ID so let's find this text box by ID so let's create a variable let's call this emp ID equals 
find the text box txt and we want to retrieve the value from that text box alright so we have the employee ID now we want to call the web service to call the web service we're going to use the jQuery Ajax function so dollar dot Ajax and we are going to use a JavaScript object so the first option I'm going to specify is the URL what is the URL we want to call we want to call this employee service dot ASMX so let's copy the name of the service and within that service we have got a function what is the name of the function get employee by ID so that's the function that we want to call so that's the URL that we want to call and this function expects some data to be passed the employee ID so let's specify the data option and again I'm going to use a JavaScript object here and if you look at the parameter you know the name of the parameter is employee ID so let's copy that so employee ID and the value we have that within this emp ID okay so that's the data that we want to pass to the server now how do we want to pass it what what is the request type you want to use get a post I want to use post so I'm going to specify the method option and we want to post that data to the server and what type of data are we expecting from the server we are expecting XML data so I'm going to specify that using data type option and finally if the request successfully completes we want to execute a function and process the result so I'm going to use the success option and associate a callback function so if the um, request is successfully executed we are going to get that data from the server and what do we want to do with that data we want to display that within these text boxes and each text box has got an ID right so first of all this is XML data that we are going to get back right so I'm going to wrap this data using a jQuery object so we can use the jQuery find method find the different XML nodes and retrieve their text right so I'm going to create a variable here let's actually call this jQuery XML equals I'm going to wrap the data using jQuery object so now this is jQuery XML so on this we can use find method find you know in the XML so if you look at what we are getting back look at that we get these elements ID element name element gender element salary element so I want to find name element okay so find what do we want to find we want to find name so what is this function going to do it's going to return this entire name element from that element we want that inner text John and to get that text I'm going to use text function okay so what we get here is the name of the employee and what do we want to do with that name we want to display that in this txt name text box and that's nothing but the ID of the text box so let's find the text box by ID and use the val function and this is the value that we want to display let's do the same thing for gender and salary so find the gender element next find the salary element so gender value we want to display in txt gender text box and salary we want to display in txt salary text box okay now if there is an error processing I want to know about that error as well so I'm going to associate error option as well so error I want to associate a callback function whatever is the error this function is going to receive it and let's simply alert that alright so that's all there to it let's save the changes and let's go ahead and reload our page let's go ahead and enter for example employee ID 2 get employee look at that we get employee ID 2 details 3 we get employee ID 3 details so the jQuery code is pretty simple and straightforward specify the URL you want to call what data you want to pass what method you want to use 
and what is the type of data you're expecting from the server and you know the callback function um, you know that you want to associate if the request is successfully processed if at all if there is any error then we are alerting that here's the jquery code that we have just written and in our next video we'll discuss how to call and consume an asp.net web service that returns json data using jquery ajax so at the moment this xml is returning xml data and what we are getting here is xml data in our next video let's see how to work with json data returned from an asp.net web service thank you for listening and have a great day